Okay, let's do the good skull here. This is the one we use for testing. We don't put out too often. So I just want to go over these. Let's go over these holes one more time. Okay, so this is the. It's a really nice skull. You can see the division here. This is the the lesser wing of the sphenoid. Anterior clinoid processes here. It's a little bit broken here, but there's a nice posterior clinoid process. Cella tersica here. Dorsum cellae would be here. Tuberculum cellae would be here. Crista galli is the sail of the sailing ship that doesn't exist. But sounds like a sailing vessel. Now, deep inside here, here's the cribriform plates. This is all the, what, the anterior cranial fossa. Now, let's check out the holes. We can always start the little ones here. So, that's spinosum, ovale, rotundum would be here. It's rotundum, ovale, spinosum, foramina serum would be here. Right? Remember in the body that's got a plug, cartilaginous plug. Now this one, unlike the other skulls, the carotid canal is underneath here. So we can't see it like some of the other skulls, you can really see it. Like you can see the probe goes under here. So this one's more lifelike to the cadavers. But carotid canal would be in there. Foramen magnum, obviously. So this whole chunk of bone right here chunk of bone. Here's the demarcation. Here's the suture right here. So this is all the petreous portion of the temporal bone. And here is a groove. That's the groove for the superior petrosal sinus. Okay, and then here, if we can get over, you can see real nicely, that's the external acoustic meatus. Now this is real nice here too, more realistic. So here's the groove for the sigmoid sinus. And the sigmoid sinus is going to run right into the, the uh, jugular foramen, which is often covered by bone here, or dura. You can see it right there. What comes out of jugular foramen? 9, 10, 11. What comes out of external acoustic meatus? Number 8. I think seven goes in there as well. So we have another groove here. This is the shortcut to the jugular foramen that's used by the inferior petrosal sinus. So this is the groove for the inferior petrosal sinus. So here's the ski slope we talked about. Remember the hypophyseal fossa or the bottom of the cella tersica is the parking lot. Take the chair left to the top of the mountain and then you ski down this big slope. This clinoid process or clinoid pro or I'm sorry, this is the these are the clinoid processes. This is the clivus. So this is the sphenoid portion. And then you can't see the demarcation where it turns into the occipital portion, but this whole thing is the clivus. Uh, what else can we see? So if you look way under here, we get another one. It's the hypoglossal canal or hypoglossal foramen leading to the hypoglossal canal. And I think, I think that is it. This whole area is the what? Posterior cranial fossa, this whole area. Middle cranial fossa, which is made up of, this is all the greater wing of the sphenoid. But remember, this part is not. So this is the petrous portion of the temporal bone, so that makes up the middle cranial fossa. Um, on the side here, this also makes up, I mean, technically. So that's the squamous portion of the temporal bone. And I think we got them all. What was this one? 
Ovali, that one. Spinosa, that one. Rotundum, what about in here? Let's tip it forward, maybe we can see it more. You can see the other side, that's the optic. The optic canal through there, which is considered to be within the lesser wing of the sphenoid. And that definitely should do it. Let's flip it over, see what else we can see. Okay, there's the nasal septum. This is the, this whole thing here, these are the pterygoid processes. This is the medial pterygoid plate. Let's see if I can get a little more depth here. Medial pterygoid plate. Lateral pterygoid plate. Pterygoid muscles connect to this lateral pterygoid plate. Here's the ham hook. Ham hook, we call it the hamulus. Can't see it so good. Let's swing this way. Maybe I can see it better. There it is. You can see it now. What are these called? I don't know why these are on your list. They're super important. Those are the uh, coani. Coani. What's this? That's the vomer. Vomer. What's all this region here? That's the body of the sphenoid. Here's the clivus again from the other side. Sphenoid portion. This would be the occipital portion. This is also the basilar portion of the occipital bone. Occipital condyles be here. These are the condylar, condylar foramen. There's an emissary vein that comes out of there. I don't think that's on your list, though. Foramen serum is here. Remember, that's plugged. And here is, we go over here, here's spinosum, foramen spinosum, foramen ovale, it's for maxillary, right? Wrong, that's mandibular nerve, man, manhole, o, mandibular nerve, I always think of a manhole cover, ovale is like the o for manhole. And this right here, foramen locerum, and who are we missing? Here is the carotid canal, right there, right there, carotid canal, right in back of it, jugular foramen, or the jugular canal. What else? What else? Right in front, I don't think you can see it. But there is the hypoglosso would be right there. Hypoglosso canal starts here. And you can see uh, this would be the what? Let's see, you can't see that because of the glare. Let's try and turn it around so we're upside down. So this is all squamous portion of the occiput of the occipital bone. How do I get that glare off? There we go. So these would be the inferior nuchal lines here and here. Superior nuchal lines are here coming to the external occipital protuberance here. There's another superior nuchal line and this guy has a highest nuchal line as well. Sometimes you get another line up above. Highest nuchal line I think this is the, called the groove for the, the posterior belly of the digastric would be here because here, this is the mastoid sticking up like that. Can we see this okay? So these are the mental spines of the mandible. Digastric fossas would be here and here. And maybe a little, or I uh, forgot what that's called. Line for the myohyoid, I think. Pretty prominent groove. Uh, let's see if we can see the where the spring is. 
That is the mandibular foramen. That's where V3 goes through. So this whole thing is the body. This would be the angle. And the ramus, of course, would be here. Here we have the coronoid process, not to be confused with the coracoid process, the scap or the shoulder area. This is the uh, this is the head and neck of the man. Uh, what do you call that? The condylar process is the official term for that. Condylar process, so the neck of the condylar process, the head of the condylar process fits in to the mandibular foramen or mandibular fossa. This is important here. It's not on the list, but in CC4, I'm going to get you with that. This is articular eminence. When you open your mouth up like this, it jumps over, jumps right over the articular eminence. So if a tag was anywhere in here, so that's the horizontal portion of the palatine bone. It's kind of hard to see. Oh, you can see it right here. There is a suture. See, this is why in reality the posterior one-third of the hard palate is made up of the, the horizontal plate, the palatine bone. So this is the palatine process of the maxillary bone up here. Perpendicular plate of the palatine bone would be here. Forms the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. And what else can I show you in here? If I do this with my editing program, I can show you these. Those are the inferior nasal concha. There is the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone there on the top. And there is the vomer. And there is the, that would be the left inferior nasal concha. Those would be the middle nasal concha, and that's about all you can see. You really can't see the superior nasal concha. I already have tapes on the rest of this stuff, so we don't need to go through that. And I hope that helps. Good luck with your test.